Hey YouTube, so uh, I've been struggling with uh, an error that I've been getting on my 2014 Subaru STI hatchback um, and it's the error uh, P2090. So um, looking at this error, uh, I've learned quite a lot about the uh, OCV system which is the variable valve timing um, system. OCV is oil control valve. Uh, and these are basically the uh, solenoids, which are the actuators that actually make the variable valve timing variable. Um, and it works that by, uh, by forcing oil um, into places that allow it to change the uh, timing on the exhaust valves and the intake valves. Now, as you'll all know, the um, STI has, uh, specifically the 2014 STI, has an EJ25 engine, which is a Boxster design engine, meaning there's two cylinders going to the left and two cylinders going to the right. Um, so two cylinders going towards passenger side, looking from the front, and um, two cylinders going towards the driver's side. And since there has to be solenoids on both the intake and exhaust, that means you've got four of these valves. Um, I did a video a couple of years ago uh, where I replaced one of these valves. Um, and at the time, I was an idiot. I did not know that there was, I don't think I knew at least, uh, I can't remember, but I don't think I knew that there was multiple valves. Um, I, I'm, so I'm not entirely sure how I got into a situation where I must have looked it up and found people getting the same error as me at the time, which was P0024. And I did a video on fixing that, but there's no reason why it should have worked. I ended up t changing an intake cylinder sorry an intake solenoid when the actual p2 uh p0024 that i had at the time was telling me that there was a problem with the exhaust solenoid now it's possible that changing one did have an effect on the other because the error wasn't it wasn't telling me that the solenoid was bad it was telling me that there was a problem um, with what that solenoid was detecting and what it was detecting could have been a problem caused by a different solenoid um but I'm not even gonna go there. That's, this is just speculation. What we have today um, is P2090, which is an open circuit or almost open circuit um, on one specific solenoid. And that is the exhaust solenoid on what I believe is the driver, uh, sorry, the passenger side. Now, if I'm right on this, and that is the problem, this is the worst solenoid, I think, to get to. The one that I changed in my previous video was on top of the engine. Um, all I had to do was remove the oil filler cap um, assembly, um, which was held in with like one or two bolts. Then I had to take out one of the bolts and the thing just popped out. And then there's the intake on the passenger side of a US vehicle, um, a right-hand side vehicle. I'm sorry, left-hand drive vehicle. Um, and uh, that one looks like it would be easy to get it to. And then there's also the exhaust, the exhaust ones. Well, those are, those are accessible from underneath the engine. So you have to take off the plastic um, protection cover underneath the engine. Um, but the one on the driver's side is super easy to get to. Uh, there's a video on that on, on YouTube. Um, looks like it would be very easy to replace. But of course, the one that I seem to have an issue is, um, is the, um, uh, is the driver's, is sorry, the passenger side one. I'm gonna show you a little diagram of this. Uh, I'm not really into photo editing, video editing, so I'm just gonna use my camera to show you the screen. So one second. So, so rather than do some fancy video editing, I just wanted to kind of show you this, but um, this is one of the exhaust um, solenoids. Um, this is the driver's side one or the right-hand side one, if you're looking from the front of the vehicle. And then the one I'm, thinking that I have a problem with is this one. Uh, the intake ones uh, is here. It's mounted on, it's mounted in this little area here, uh, which is right next to your battery. And there should be, there's one on the other side um, back here, uh, probably relatively easy to get to too. But the one we're gonna try to get to today is this one. And I know for a fight that just taking off the plastic cover doesn't give you access to it because the, um, uh, the, what I think is the exhaust that leads to the turbo is right here. Um, so we've got some heat shielding we're going to have to get off. So that, uh, is the job. We're going to see if we can get to that solenoid reasonably easily because I haven't seen any videos on how to do this. 
So we're under the uh, passenger side of the vehicle and you're going to need to remove these uh, 12 millimeter bolts um, of which there are four I think. One here, one here, one here and then one back under the oil by the oil filter. Um, as you can imagine with a, a vehicle that's from 2014 this um, these are a bit messed up and uh, unsurprisingly one of them just sheared off so this one this one here uh, was completely tossed and so that's gone um, now we have access to this and hopefully that's going to help us looks like we're going to have to take off the uh, uh, oxygen sensor right there okay so you can see that um, next to this uh, uh, temperature shield there is a bolt here that's uh, 10 millimeters i just took it out and there is the famous blue connector, which is the OCV valve, OCV connector. So this is what's causing me issues. And it looks like it's this that I need to get to. And God only knows how we're going to do that because there is a lot of stuff uh, that's in the way here. And it looks like we need to remove this assembly, which is under this shield which can only be got to by taking off whatever the heck that is, like turbo, turbo pipe of some sort. So that's going to be fun. All right, I think I'm making progress here. So I uh, pulled the uh, connector off the top because I thought I was going to take that out. Turns out this was not going to come out. Um, so instead I had to, well, okay, let me start from the beginning. Two bolts here, uh, not particularly difficult to get off. Bolt here, not particularly difficult to get off. This one back here, which is kind of like um, right behind uh, this oxygen sensor, uh, really tough to get to without removing the oxygen sensor. And I tried everything I could to get that off. And I was basically just lifting the engine uh, with even when I could put force on it, that was what was happening. So managing to get these bolts off now, uh, should just be a matter of minutes before I can get this down and we'll have direct access to um, the the uh, passenger side exhaust or CV and then we'll find out whether there's some also some uh, new gaskets that I might have to get and maybe some new bolts that I'm from this mess of bolts that I'm removing here so all right, well, let's see how that goes. I'm gonna need my hand back. So I actually totally forgot to mention how I got to this difficult bolt. Um, so I'm using uh, a ratcheting 14 millimeter wrench on the back of this. And I was actually originally using a solid uh, 14 millimeter wrench. That's the, this one that's up here now, but it was originally on here. I actually put it on here and then I used a lever bar um, to pry here and push that up. Once I sprung it loose, um, this started to spin, which is why you can see I've now got a second 14 millimeter wrench uh, jammed up in there. And it looks like it's thumb, like thumb tight loose now. So I should be able to, uh, should be able to get this off. You see, that's, that's really loose. So that, that worked too. These were all came out with uh, sockets, 14 millimeter sockets. Uh, no problem um, on these as well. Uh, just this one. This one needed 14 millimeter uh, wrenches if you can't get this off. If you can get this off, I guess you can just use the same technique. But if you can't get that off or you don't want to um, and you've got ratcheting ply uh, ret ratcheting uh, sockets, uh, ratcheting um, wrenches, then use those. Of course, taking those four bolts out wasn't the end. I should have realized that there is, when I looked up there, there's more stuff holding it on. So I gotta take off that bolt um, there, left, right, and the one that I've got on here. So this is another, um, what do we got here? Another 11 millimeters, I think. Could be wrong, hang on, let me check. Fourteen, 14 millimeter, uh, but with an appropriate amount of leverage, um, these are coming off uh, just 
just fine. So once I've got that off, you see these two are gone, these two are gone. This is actually gonna drop down. I'm sure I'm gonna need some gaskets now. All right, nearly there. This thing's gonna fall on me. When it does come out, it's gonna just drop like a chunk of iron. Because it is a chunk of iron. One in the middle to the end. All right, last one. Shields in the way. Ah, damn it. Looks like I'm going to have to take the heat shield off the top because it does not want to pivot. And there's not enough space. All right. Heat shield's coming off. Okay, folks, this was it. I did not have to take that heat shield off. It is still attached, which is good because those bolts are not likely to ever come off. Um, might be an issue getting back on again, but uh, there it is. There is the thing that seems to be giving me the problems, and I'm really hoping that that's uh, what I need to replace at this point because uh, obviously a bit of a hassle to get to it. And uh, uh, this is definitely definitely the exhaust um, OCV for the uh, passenger side. So um, I did conf I did uh, pretty much confirm that this is the problem because I disconnected this and the and then cleared the cords and started the engine again, and I've still got the same problem. So it's as if this thing was wasn't connecting. So the only other thing it could be is a break in the wire harness. And at that point, oh my god, I don't even know what I'm going to do. But hopefully it's just going to be a case of getting this off. These are all 10 millimeter bolts. Take those off, uh, get a new one. And hopefully that solves all my uh, P2090 problems. So the variable valve timing uh, OCV valve that solenoid that I need um, is not in stock uh, at my local auto parts store. And they didn't even get to the point where they asked me which valve I needed. They just don't have any, and it's not local or like there's plenty of shops in town and within their system, they don't have any. And I kind of need to put the, uh, um, that exhaust manifold thing that we just took off. I need to put it back together again so I can get this car out of the way. Um, so I can get my other car out of the garage. So I've had an idea, which is either going to be genius or completely terrible, depending on whether this works out. But I'm going to take the solenoid out of the driver's side, uh, which is easily accessible, uh, and see if it fits on the passenger side. Um, put everything back together again. Um, I have the advantage of seeing if the code swaps from one side to the other. Uh, so if, it, if the code changes from bank one bank to another bank, I'll know that that's even more definitely the part that's gone bad and not the wiring and uh yeah we'll see if this works so i'm done putting everything back together 
Um, I have the exhaust manifold uh, back on. Um, here you can see the uh, OCV valve that I swapped over. So this OCV valve was originally um, on that side over there, and then I swapped them around. The housing is different. Uh, but the actual OCV valve that's held in with this bolt here inside the housing uh, is the same. So this is all getting put back together again. Uh, I have actually test uh, test driven the car and it does seem to be uh, working, but it was throwing some intermittent fault. Um, the same the same code, uh, 2090. So it seemed to me like it might be, with it being intermittent, it might be an electrical an electrical problem. And when I was putting my, uh, this is the um, connector for the uh, O2 sensor that was sticking out of the exhaust valve. Um, I had taken this off so I could drop this cable down. And when I was doing that, you can see right next to it is the wiring harness. And this wiring harness was actually loose. It was um, this gold, sorry, this <laughs> gray, um, this gray bracket here. Uh, was actually um, kind of in a 45 degree upright position and now it's locked down. Um, so this wasn't locked. So I'm now wondering whether my, the whole problem was caused by the fact that when the engine, this engine was put in for, well, this engine was put in, in January, uh, it's now September. Um, when it was put in, um, this was just a tiny bit loose and over time it's maybe come, well, come out a little tiny bit. And this was the first problem. Like this is the first wire that like kind of intermittently brought connection. It was decently in there, just wasn't locked in place. So I am kind of now hoping that that's, that's what the issue was. But we will see. Um, either way, um, you can swap the exhaust OCV valves from one side to the other to try and diagnose the faults that I had. Um, that didn't work in my case because um, when I swapped them over, the fault kind of just went away, uh, which was odd because um, I had cleared it a bunch of times and it wasn't it wasn't going away, but swapping over the OCV valves um, uh, You know and then moving moving things around seemed to seem to fix it So that could also be an indication that it's a uh, that it was an odd electrical fault um, So yeah, everything's going back together again. Uh, we'll see if we'll see if this holds out if not uh, I might actually have to find out if I can splice in a new wire from uh, from this section here um, down to the um, down to the OCV because it, it does not seem to be the actual OCV valve itself. If you can swap one side to the other and the fault doesn't shift, um, that tells me it's not not the actual OCV valve. So um, yeah, hope this helps.